huge thank you to Neil Finn and Cassandra Treadwell right there. That was, uh, that was beautiful. <laughs> um, it is inspiring to see the meaningful ways artists are bringing social justice issues to the forefront of their work and how platforms like Global Citizen facilitate artists to band together and create meaningful change on a global scale. Truly, nothing brings people together quite like the arts. Creatives have been using art as a vessel to create change for generations. Um, and our next guests are at the forefront of this today. Uh, in this session, Change Making Through the Arts, our panelists will be discussing their personal journeys of using art as a catalyst to drive awareness for social justice issues and how they continue to inspire their audience to think differently about the world around them. So without further ado, please welcome to the stage Ziggy Ramo, Janet Tobias and Jesse McLaughlin. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, it's oh, back to my seat, but thank you for um, fixing the pillow. The pillow. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you all so much for joining us for the session today, Change Making Through the Arts. Um, I'd love to give you each a moment to introduce yourselves um, and enlighten the audience about your work and how you're campaigning for change through the arts. So, Janet, let's start with you. <laughs> You're a person wearing many hats. Uh, you're an Emmy and a Peabody Award win winner, uh, winning filmmaker, journalist, and co founder of a nonprofit global health reporting center, as well as an adjunct assistant professor of medicine. So, firstly, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> and secondly, how do you find the time to do all of that? And I, thirdly, how do all of these things intertwine and, and inspire you creatively? Um, is, you know, filmmaking is the art. Being a director, a writer, is, uh, is getting to tell stories, which is an immense privilege. Um, but um, I grew up really being interested in policy um, and in, in people's lives. And so um, having the ability to make change through that art is, is really what gives it meaning. Um, with art, you never know how good it's going to be. It's always the limits of of many things, um, but you can always try and make a difference with what you do. Yeah, right on. That's lovely. And so, Jesse, you've been involved in the music industry for many years. You've released music under Island Def Jam, and I also learned backstage you're also a doctor. Um, so how have you managed to blend your passion for music and performing with humanitarian work through your charity, uh, All True? Firstly, I just want to acknowledge any First Nations uh, and elders in the room, past and present, uh, for allowing us to present here today. Um, great question, <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Thank you. Um, to be honest, uh, I had some challenges when I was growing up, and one of the greatest spaces I've ever had was I was 13 and I entered a music studio and it was the first time I ever felt safe, valued and understood just as I am. Right. So um, when we created All True Charity and what we're best known for is All True Outreach Festival, the element that music has is vital because it, for a lot of people it's enigmatic. It's right. the indescribable feeling that you don't have an answer but you feel it in in, it moves your soul. And I think um, by blending something creative, I think creatives can also attest to this, we think outside the box. Like we don't really align with the word normal. So that kind of gives us this other great freedom and privilege to really push boundaries and continue to evolve. Um, so I think it's really important to blend both arts and charity because it's a form of expression. Yeah. And at the basis of those two things, whether it for me, music, medicine or charity, it's the element of what it means to be human and to continue to advocate for that. Beautiful, beautiful. And so, Ziggy, over to you. Um, you and I aren't doctors. I'm a, well, I'm an, yeah. I was going to say I'm a dropout. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Uh, okay. I did uh, my undergrad and started postgrad med, but... Okay, but not a... Finished, so... I'll so you did you postgrad? Up. Yeah, I, start, I only got through four or seven years, though, so I'm very less impressive. I don't know, man. I no, that's not no. true. Mm. I, I'm into homeopathy, so, you know, I, I don't belong here. Uh, that's, that's a joke. That's, uh. Anyway, so, 
Ziggy, um, you're an award-winning musician who's consistently challenging big political issues that we as Australians live and breathe day to day. Why, why is activism at the forefront of your music and was it always the path for you? It's always been a really interesting relationship for me because uh, I think echoing what Janet said about the privilege of making art, you know, um, I felt for the longest time very voiceless and that I didn't have a voice and uh, now I'm speaking in a room full of people. So that's a really bizarre um, kind of cognitive dissonance to navigate but I think the thing that I've always led with is I don't sit down and think that I'm going to make something political. I sit down and I try and tell my story and then being who I am in this country comes with being politicised, you know, like my experience is is politicised, but um, it's not that I shy away from wanting to make change. Like for me, I mean, the idea of an award is very little to, um, you know, like a policy that could change the outcomes of my community. Uh, but I think first and foremost, um, change has to come through connection um, and so I guess why my music uh, inadvertently becomes labelled political is because I'm a black person writing about a black story in a country that has ignored that history mm. um, so it then inadvertently challenges um, the perceived status quo. Yeah right, yeah when truth is wrapped in something beautiful it really impacts and like you said inherently politics is part of your lived experience and I can from listening to your music and seeing the impact as it has it's striking and I feel it yeah well really and I, cause I think politics is a part of everyone you know it's just that yeah. there's a privilege yeah. of being labeled apolitical but apolitical you're still taking a stance yeah. it's just one that doesn't jar anyone right you know so like as artists we all make political decisions within our art yeah. every time we sit down and create something it's just one is normalized and another one is a little bit annoying mm. so yeah. well or impactful or well, frustrating which is great college dropout <laughs> hey um so this is a question for for everybody so how do you believe the arts, whether it is music, film or theatre or any kind of creative pursuit, how can that engage people in conversation about important social issues in a way that other mediums may not? And how, how does it impact? And I guess maybe why. So don't answer at the same time. <laughs> maybe, maybe one person at a time. I'd well, Janet said something beautiful behind this magical stage. <laughs> and I paid him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think what you said about um, uh, it being like a, a tunnel kind of into someone else's shoes, like a portal into someone else's shoes. And mm. I think that is what is so uh, magical about it because, you know, I used to be so frustrated as a young kid about all the things that people didn't know. And then as I've grown older I'm like well of course they don't know it they didn't live it you know like you only know what you've lived you only know your experience you are your experience and so when we have grown up in societies that have strategically been segregated the lived experiences are completely separate mm. so then our histories are completely separate and so I think art becomes such a powerful tool because it, it crosses political lines it crosses that segregation it uh, it allows you to delineate um, that portal to step into someone else's shoes and I think that then that that is where connection and, and change can boil and, and that's e exactly what Janet said um, behind stage. Yeah, I would just say is that story is one of the most human things. Story connects us all from the time you're a tiny child you learn about the world through story. Um, and so whether it's in a film or in a theatrical experience or in the lyrics in a song or in a painting, um, uh, that story connects people and allows them that window.
Yeah, it definitely allows you to dream. I think when you're tied up in something artistic, again, like Ziggy said, when you're creating something, it's so intentional for you of what you're creating. It, it doesn't necessarily have this end goal as if I'm going to, my one song or one lyric would necessarily make a change, but it's incredibly therapeutic and powerful for yourself. But one of like the greatest things that we can even compare to how arts have made one small difference is like on Netflix right now, you know, we are the world. Like look at how many mm. collaboration, one of the greatest things about art is collaboration. All these people come together to create in its purest form. You're met with such vulnerability and that's the only way you can connect authentically. And I think right now that's exactly what society needs because it's incredibly hard to connect with each other when we seem to be disconnected from ourselves. And art allows this portal, like a catalyst, to be able to come together in an incredibly meaningful way. And that's also not necessarily as confronting. You know, we're not standing here with like pitchforks, like telling you all these things, but there is a way in which we can intentionally serve and create meaningful connection in a very authentic, organic way, which also, in it includes youth, like youth want to hear it in music. It's these other elements where we can ignite change unknowingly in this, what I would call magic. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. Like, uh, we've got mi millions of ways that we identify and navigate life, but we have a soul and art communicates to that soul. Hence how it can just move the masses regardless of any of those identifiers. Hearing you all say that is, is moving and true. It's lovely. Just want to say that. Um, so, Ziggy, um, as a First Nations artist, your music has aimed to tell Australia's true race history, and you cover confronting topics like the invasion, the intergenerational trauma, deaths in custody, for example. You know, th they're not light topics, and you have seemed to navigate these quite well, but how do you balance the art and the advocacy would you say? And yeah, I know I, it's like, I think art is, the line between selflessness and selfishness is pretty, pretty blurry with art, you know? It's like, <laughs> I think we're sitting here as change makers and it's like, we all like sit in a room and think we have important things to say and then convince a lot of other people that it's important and yeah. feel really good about the validation that comes and then feel really bad about the validation. That, like, it's, it's <laughs> like, I've always really struggled with art because uh, it's like, I think the thing for me, why I always come back to it is, is we come from 50,000 years of oral culture. Yeah. And so with us, language was power, language was knowledge. It's, it's like song lines was literally how we um, educated um, for millennia. So, um, you know, I come from a dispossessed lineage and even though I don't speak my ancestral language, um, the traditions still flow through me. So, mm. like, language has always come very naturally to me and finding story, um, you know, and, and as I've gotten further in my career, I've worked across more and more mediums. And yeah. the thing that I've realized is I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best guitar player. I'm not the best uh, composer. I'm not the best actor. I'm not the best author. But all the thing that I know is I know story and I know how to share story. Mm. And so for me, I've, I've never thought that like, oh, I, it's limited to sitting and writing a song. It's just I have an idea and I want to share it. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that is the most human thing, right? We all have these ideas and hopes and, and we crave connection. Mm. And so for me, balancing what is seemingly confronting or not, is it's just that like, this is what I've lived. And yeah. um, I just want to honor truth. I'm just trying to share something that feels honest. Right, okay. And so Janet, as a, as a filmmaker, how do you approach telling stories that highlight issues and inspire action and as a part of that how do you ensure their authenticity and sensitivity um 
Well, first, you usually go on a learning journey because I work in documentaries, so you, um, which is so much fun. Um, and you try and think about what the audience would want to understand or know. Um, yep. And then you try and find the people who will give you access to their lives to provide that window into another experience. Um, and whether it's, um, and you try and find unexpected people. Um, so whether it's a young Liberian doctor running an Ebola unit at the height of the Ebola outbreak, or a 16 year old in juvenile detention up for a serious crime, um, or, or even a more well-known person like Dr. Anthony Fauci, who was the lead American health official during the pandemic. Um, and um, and you, you need them to trust you. Trust is everything in the yeah. world of factual. Um, and they're handing their lives to you. Um, and so you have to honor that um, to win their trust and to really give a window into that. Um, right. And you also have to honor the audience because the audience knows when it's in a factual, when it's fake, when it's reality television or reenactment. Um, and, um, and so the proudest moments I have in filmmaking are when, um, I would say one of them is um, a young, that young Liberian doctor, Dr. Soka Moses. Um, and in front of the camera, he was unpacking what it meant day in and day out for months to watch half your patients die a horrible death, um, but be the savior of the other half um, and to not see your family. And he, I think for the first time, because we were letting him have that space, started to cry and said, I feel for all the people I saved, I feel I failed because my friend, another doctor died and I couldn't save him. And I thought that is a window into what it is to be a healthcare worker and to risk your life. And, um, and so that's, you know, we had his trust in order for him to do that and for the audience to see in the world over. Right. There were lots of other characters in the film from China to Africa to Europe to the US. He was everyone's favorite character because the audience saw the reality of another human being and walked in their shoes. Right. Um, now we're going, just a touch over time, but before we break, I'd, I'd love to hear from you, Jess, if you could tell us a bit about the All True Festival. You've got this mantra of a party with a purpose, which sounds excellent. And so how do you create the right balance between music and celebration while driving your mission? I think um, we're best known for moving awareness into action. Tangible, effective altruism. You see in real time, the positive impact you can have on another person's life, especially at our All True Festival. Yep. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it's about balance. I think it's about intentional work. It's not about performative empathy or performative progression. Yep. It is about the true action. If you want a different outcome, coming together and collaborative collaboratively working together is the only way that we can move the tipping scale in a positive way. Yeah. We've got awesome other organizations like things like Sustainable Salons or Thread Together and Homey that want to make a tangible difference. But in order to do that, if you want to go far, you've got to go together. Yeah. So I think it's not necessarily about balance as it is about finding the right tribe and intentional individuals and brands and nonprofits and people doing good work that will instill in the organization at grassroots and community. Yeah. You know, it's never a bad time to do the right thing. Brilliant. Brilliant. That well, look, time is now. <laughs> yeah. Well, can you please um, thank, help me thank Janet, Jesse, and Ziggy for their time and their expertise and their experience? Thank you so much. Thank you so much.